We're going to turn our Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 13, and I'm thankful that Jeremy didn't actually message my wife, because um, it, there could have been some things there that, that he would have had to say that I would have had to live up to, all right? And so I'm glad that he, um, he didn't actually, or maybe he did, and he just, uh, there, were, there was too much to read and too much advice for me, but... You know, usually when I, when I travel, the first thing most people ask is, is your wife with you? You know, like, I'm here too, you know, by the way. And um, it's hard when your wife is much more popular than yourself, right? but I'm glad, for, glad for, uh, for, for that. And, you know, we, I love the theme that you have this year. I think it's something that, you know, often we, we take for granted, church. You know, we come along, and, and many of you belong to, to good churches that you have, a, you have a pastor who comes, and he's studied the Word of God. You've got a, a group of friends that you can be around. And, and sometimes in the, in the normality of that, the, the meaning of it can get lost, and the significance of it can get lost. And I think it's important to, to be reminded about things that, you know, we... We ought to know the importance of, but it's good to be reminded again and again why things are important. And I appreciate this church, you know, they've been a great support over the many years of, of our friendship, even my time here in Sydney, but uh, even going, extending into my time now in Brisbane, I've, I've, I always know that your pastor in this church prays and prays for the different ministries represented here, and you can sense that, you know, in coming together. How much there's a great care for for us as uh, as as brethren in the in the Lord, but also as friends in the in the ministry. But um, you know, I think it's important that that we do come with a sense of expectation when we come to church. I think when we our services are are scheduled, we ought to be faithful. We ought to come along with a sense of expectation that we're going to get something from the Word of God. And, and I hope that is your attitude. I hope that you come along not just to, to turn up and fill a, uh, fill a seat or fill a service or, or do something, but you come with a sense of expectation. And, and I don't know if, you, if that's you this week, that you've come with a sense of maybe there's a, something that you're seeking the Lord about. You know, maybe there's a, a, a question that's in your heart. Maybe there's something that you need clarity from the Lord. And I want to tell you that it's a great thing to come to a church and come to conference and come to summit and, and, and have that sense of seeking something from God. I hope that you've come this morning and, and perhaps you've asked some things already of the Lord that He would clarify some things in your heart and maybe you're going through a situation. Maybe you're going through a circumstance in your life as a young adult that you're just trying to figure some things out. And you know, something about the young adult age that's very unique is often you have some of the greatest decisions that you're going to make, but you probably have the least experience to make them. And so you're, you're still trying to figure out, you know, what, what, is, what is it that's ahead that I, I, that, that's, that's, that's important, that's needful for me, and, and perhaps you've got those kinds of questions, or you're just simply going through a real situation. Maybe you're seeking for a job. Maybe there's a, there's a relationship situation that you're trying to figure out, or you, you, there, there's a circumstance, maybe a trial or a trouble in your life that's, that's just really eating you up, and you just need some sort of answer. I want to tell you that you've come to the right place. You've come to the place where the Bible's going to be open, and, and, and there's those that have studied and have prepared and have gone through a, 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 just, just a, a seeking from the Lord themselves to get you perhaps the answer that you need. And, and we're going to have a look at a character in the Bible here this, uh, this, this morning who very similarly was seeking for something. He had something that was happening in his life. He was a king who was ruling over the nation of Israel, the, 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 that half of the, the nation. And right there he was going through some real battles and not just battles like we say figuratively, like we do when we go through troubles and trials. This was a real battle. The Syrians, this great army, was really taking, taking some of the ground that they had. 
And so he comes seeking a little bit for some answers from uh, Elisha, who at this point now in our reading was really at his deathbed. And he was really seeking for some answers. And, and what Elisha does is, I think, instructive for us, and, and there's some lessons that we can learn about sometimes how God answers our questions, about how God answers when we're seeking for something. And I want you to pick up with me 2 Kings chapter 13, and notice verse 14, and we'll read down a couple of verses, and then we'll, we'll, we'll quickly go through what we're going to have this morning, because I know there's a lot of things on today. And I noticed we were just going through the, um, the, all, all of the, fo- the focus, of the workshops this afternoon, and, and we, there was one particular, uh, particular um, class that was most popular. All right, 49 people signed up for this. It was the waiting or dating. And some of you look surprised like, I didn't sign up for it. Yeah, right. But that was the most popular. So I'm looking forward to that and, and hearing, hearing um, from the, all the other teachers as well. But, but 2, Corinthians, uh, 2 Kings chapter 13, look at verse 14. Now Elisha was fallen sick of his sickness, whereof he died. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over his face and said, O my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. That's an interesting sort of greeting to give Elisha. Elisha uh, similarly said that to Elijah on his departure. And and so it was a a, a greeting of respect. And Elisha said unto him, Take bow and arrows. And he took unto him bow and arrows. And he said to the king of Israel, Put thine hand upon the bow and He put his hand upon it, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. And he said, Open the window eastward, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, Shoot, and he shot. And he said, The arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of the deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou have consumed them. And he said, Take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, Smite upon the ground, and he smote thrice, and stayed. And notice verse 19, and the man of God was wroth with him and said, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Then hadst thou smitten Syria till thou hadst consumed it, whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. And so there was a real issue that that, that Joash was going through. And that issue was a very real one. It was the army of Syria. They had already taken some cities, they had already taken some ground, and, and they were encroaching in the territory that Israel had. And, and here, it, at, at Elisha's deathbed, Joash was seeking for some sort of direction and some sort of clarity. And I, I know maybe many of you are quite in that mode where you're asking for something quite as serious as that, but there might be times where you will seek. There might be times where you are in a very real circumstance where you really need to get some sort of clarification or some sort of answer. And here, it's interesting that, that, that he comes to Elisha really at his deathbed and that this prophet, this man of God, gives him this, this response. He says, take bow and arrow. And then he says to him, take it and shoot. Now take it and shoot. And he's just telling him something that's simple. And, you know, I began to think about that. You know, kings in, that day, in those days, they were really not just made to lead. They weren't just called to preside over a people. They were, they were trained and they were prepared to go into battle. Kings, the, 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 the whole reason why Israel even sought for an earthly king was so that they could go into, the, into battle for them. And so this, this king... There was an expectation that he was going to go into battle, but, but he came knowing that he didn't have the goods to go into the battle. Knowing that this force that he was going to encounter wasn't, wasn't, wasn't one to take lightly. And so he goes to Elisha because this was the man of God. This was the one that, 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 uh, that had the d- double portion of Elijah, this mighty prophet's spirit. He had done some great mighty works already. He had raised 
the, the, the widow's son, after he had, he had already blessed her by, by prophesying that she would have a son after a long period of not having one. He had done all of that and he had done many other things. He had already presided over a type of a, a, a famine in the land and had already prophesied of the victory that they were going to have over Syria. And so he goes for, for, for an answer from Elisha. And Elisha tells him something that he would have been quite familiar with. He just said, take this bow and arrow and shoot. Now, I don't think, I, I don't think that, uh, that, that Joash would have immediately thought at that point that this was all that it was going to take. I'm sure he had some preconceived notions of, of what Elisha was going to provide for him. But you know what he, he provided him? It was something that was already familiar. It was already that was something that was quite simple. It was already something that he had already been practiced with. And we understand that this was going to be symbolic of the great victory that he, was, he, he potentially could have had. But, but he gave him, firstly, something simple. He gave him something that he already knew about. And, you know, I, I began to think about the fact that over the course of the years that uh, I grew up in church, how there were times where I had, I had asked my pastor some things. I had asked for some direction and I had asked that they would give me some counsel and at the times when I've had now as a pastor the opportunity to speak to different young people and different people of different life, uh, life stages and, and so often, even in the most seemingly complicated and seemingly impossible situations, often the advice is quite simple and something that is already practiced. You know, I don't know if you've ever come to your, your, your pastor or, or a, a mentor in your life and you've had a question about something that, where you've wanted to improve on or something that, you, that, that is serious in your life and you already in your mind perhaps had an expectation of what they were going to say. And maybe you had this grand plan in your mind that this is the, what they're going to say and it's going to be this almost eerie and spooky type of, 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 uh, of experience. You're going to get something that it, it just so evidently from God. And I remember a time when I was just young in the, in the ministry and uh, I, 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 there was a, a pastor that is a mentor to me, Pastor Wayne Shemish. I came up to him, we were at a conference together and, and I said, preacher, how do I become a better, a better preacher? How do I improve in, in my preaching and how do I get better at it? And, and I, I remember I had all of these expectations in my head. I thought, he's going to tell me you know, you need, to, you need to be up at the crack of dawn and, and pray for three hours. And you need to climb up a mountain and just get alone with God. And I thought all of these things that he was going to say, I thought he was going to say, you need to fast for, uh, for two weeks straight before you even, uh, you know, open the, the word of God. And I had all of these preconceived notions. And I sat there with great expectation. And you know what he told me? He says, Hernan, preach short. Talk about an anti-climax, right? But, but, you know, I think about Joash here. And this was the Syrian army. This was serious stuff. And here he was going to Elisha, and Elisha just goes, take bow and arrow and shoot. You know, I think about another military leader who came to Elisha, Naaman. And Naaman thought that he was going to do all of these things. He was going to um, he was going to perform all of these sort of spiritual acts. And all it was, he sends out his servant and he tells him, go into the River Jordan and dunk in it seven times. And sometimes, you know, we're seeking for a solution and we're seeking for an answer. And God's answer to us through some counsel is just simple. In fact, it's something that we already know. In fact, it's something that we're already practiced in. And it's just so often... Those times where I've come, it's just a matter of being reminded, hey, have you prayed about it? Have you studied, have you tried to search the scriptures about it? Hey, have you, have you sought other counsel about it? It's simple. It was things that I already knew. It was things I already understood, but I had to be reminded of the importance of going through that process. And sometimes the solutions that he offers us, that God offers us are simple. But here's the thing, they still need to be followed by faith. See, faith is believing what God said. And so often, 
God has the ability through His Word to cut through the real issues of life and the real importances of life. And He cuts through what is actually powerful and right and good. And He just gives a simple advice, but it's got to be followed by faith. It's got to be followed with a belief that God knows what He's doing. It's got to be followed with the belief that God has ultimate wisdom and and actually this is His way. And whilst we might find great complication in the situation that we find ourselves in, and we find ourselves in in a bit of a a perilous time perhaps, that actually God in, in all of His sovereignty and all of His power just knows how to handle it. And, and Elisha just gives him, firstly, just a simple solution. He just said, do, the thing that you, do, do this thing that you've, all, you've done before. He said, shoot, and he shot. And, and this wasn't new to him. He, he'd used this before. He, he understood that, that, that this was how, how to use this thing. And, and he understood, though, that he was limited, and therefore he needed to follow this by faith. And I wonder if there's some things that, that you're akin to already. That this week, it's just simply not any new revelation. It's not anything new that you've not known before. It's just a reminder of those things to do that you already know to do. And you're, and you're thinking, well, I spent all this money and invested all this time, and I'm going to hear something I already know. Yeah. You notice that about your pastor sometimes as... Sometimes there's just some things that he'll preach on over and over again. It's just the simple things. It's just those things that are right to do. It's those things that are are, are common weaponry for us as believers, as God's people. And he just gave good counsel that was just familiar. And so that's what we learned, the first thing. And the second thing we see that, that he comes, and notice with me, notice there in verse 16 now, And he said to the king of Israel, put thine hand upon the bow. And he put his hand upon it. And notice this, and Elisha put his hands upon the king's hands. Here's the next thing that that God will do often when when we're seeking for an answer. Is that his his answer will come with some assistance. You you imagine this this situation and you imagine the the weakened hands of Elisha. Remember we just read in uh, in verse 14 that he uh, he was sick. He was nigh unto death. And we understand that, that Elisha had, had lived a life for God and he, he was this mighty prophet, but he had weakened. He was now at, at his, his final moments of life. And here he was coming alongside Joash who was facing this great problem. And Elisha comes alongside him. You know what I've often found is, is when we've sought the Lord, that he often brings those sometimes most, uh, most unlikely to come alongside us. And, and I, I think sometimes even we take for granted those that, that, that have gone through and have experienced and have walked with God. And, you know, I, I think about times where, where I've been discouraged and times when I've really been seeking the Lord about something. And, and you know, those who are older in the church who just recognize some things about a younger man and what, what he's going through, maybe even just... My, my mannerism and my body language, and they just sense perhaps from the law that, hey, someone just needs to come alongside this man. You know, the other night we had dinner at the Gasmans, and, and by the way, that's Bella. All right, Bella. She, she, I think, did you win? You won socks, by the way, anyway. So, but we went to her parents' place, and we, we had dinner there. But I just sat there, and I, just, I was reminded that many times her parents ministered to me. The times where, where really as I was sitting and, and pretty discouraged about things in my life, how, you know, Mercy Gasman, her mom, made a meal. And what, what some, some of the times where she just made a meal and would sit beside my wife and I and just say a kind word. And you know, the, that, that was sometimes we're looking for a solution and looking for something from God, like he's going to just remove it. But sometimes he doesn't remove it, he just puts someone beside you. To just, to just come beside you and lend you some strength, to, to lend you some guidance. And, and here in the next verse, he tells, Elisha tells Joash, you know, shoot eastward. He gave some guidance and direction. 
And sometimes we, we, we can't discount those that God will just bring along in our lives to just come alongside. Sometimes weaker hands. Sometimes hands that we, we think can't bear anymore. They're, they've, they've got their own situation, their own problems, their, their own things they're seeking God for, and yet they're so often the ones that God will bring alongside. And Elisha comes along and he puts his hand upon the king's hand. In verse 17, he said, open the window eastward, and he opened it. Then Elisha said, shoot, and he shot. And he said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance, and the arrow of deliverance from Syria, for thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou have consumed them. Notice eight, verse 18, he, he said, take the arrows, and he took them. And he said unto the king of Israel, smite upon the ground, and he smote thrice and stayed. Notice that with me. He goes three times, and, and here's the last lesson we learn as we, we close off. And he says in verse 19, the man of God was wroth with him. He said, you should have gone five or six times. Here's the, the, the lesson we learn. Sometimes God's answer is simple. Sometimes God's answer is just someone coming alongside you to assist you. But sometimes God's answer is not in the doing. It's in the how much of the doing. You know, sometimes what it is is just you're reminded about something you already know, but you're supposed to take it further than you've already taken it. You know, he could have, he could have smoked. There was more arrows to, to shoot. And, and really, what, what God had for him was victory. But, but he, he limited himself. He, instead of taking the solution and going all out with it, he left some behind. And, you know, I, I think about that sometimes. We get something from the Lord. And, and instead of running with it and going all in, we sort of just see how it goes. You know, sometimes the solution is, is simple. You, you ought to pray about it. And, and here's what we do. We just pray about it once. We pray about it twice. We pray about it three times. And nothing, nothing seems to happen. We get tired of it. And maybe you're one or two more prayers away from actually getting the thing that you needed from God. Maybe you're just another day away of, of just being faithful in your Bible reading for, for you to get some clarity, some victory. Maybe you were just one or two th times away from coming to church again and hearing the preaching again and, and coming along and, and God has resourced you. God has made that available to you, but you haven't taken it. And sometimes the, the, the impatience of our world brings us to a place where we haven't gone as far as God could have taken us. We haven't gone and we could have smitten five or six, but we settled on three. And we settled on something that, that actually God had much more for us. He, he had much more in that, in that answer. He had much more victory, but we, we settled for that and and, and, you know, sometimes we get limited in our scope, in our imagination of things, and we think that's enough when God is saying, no, no, I have so much more for you. You know, this week I'm going to hasten a guess that you're going to hear some things that are quite familiar. You're going to hear some things that is just a good reminder. I want to tell you, don't discount that because God is in that too. D don't, don't walk away thinking, well, that was a waste of a week. Listen, have your heart open because... God can speak to you again. And God often is in the, the business of just reminding us of what we already know. And often what we already know and practice is the very thing that we need to gain all the victory. Maybe it's just a recommitment to go further in your walk with God. Instead of leaving some things in the quiver, no, no, take it all, be all in. Maybe it, instead, of, instead of going, well, I, I, that's all I'm comfortable to do. Listen, Push the limit and go beyond because God has so much more and God is, is more able to bring us through. And so I want to encourage you this morning as we, we get into the, the rest of the conference, the rest of the week. You know, God might have some things for you that are familiar, but that might be the thing that you need. Hey, God might, might as you, you seek him this week, bring alongside you the very one that can be an encouragement. And maybe you just need to be sensitive to that as God's people Look around, understand perhaps those that, that, that you can sense that are discouraged and come alongside and, and be a, a friend and a help to them.
Or it just could be that, that you already know it and you just need to go further in your life with it. And, and as we seek God this week, would we just have an attitude of, Lord, give me all that I need and let me do all that I can.